Hi everybody, Charlie here with another episode of the Cherry Podcast. This week, we talk about celebrity cards because we hit one of the very popular Jason Alexander cards in the new NT Baseball. We look at the question of have you or should you overpay for a card you really want? And we compare the Kaboom against the Precious Metal Gem card. Thanks for listening, guys, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye. There are a few uh, good topics to talk about today. Mm. Um, But my favourite one that I wanted to start with, because it's had such a huge reaction on um, on our Instagram, on our Facebook, is that Jason Alexander slash George Costanza card pulled last night by Mr. Blake Riley. I've seen it knocking around all week. People asking where it's come from. It comes from National Treasures, yeah? National Treasures. Baseball. Baseball, of course. Mm. And um, I have seen a few photos go around in the last about four or five days. And I thought, that's a cool card. Um, Obviously referencing the classic Seinfeld episode Mm. um, where he is with the Yankees. And... um, huge reaction like 500 odd likes lots of comments a lot of people talking about what they want to pay to get one i think i saw one on ebay posted asking for three grand they're they're definitely over a thousand us with bids at the moment there's Mm. there's a number of them which is huge Mm. for for a card that doesn't have an auto um it's obviously got a patch or or a swatch from a yankees maybe like a warm-up yeah. Or something. So there's ninety. There's only ninety nine copies. It's mm. a pretty iconic kind of. There's a number of different elements: Seinfeld, Jeter, mm. um, baseball. So there's some iconic elements to it, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, I don't know. Mm. I like it too. It got me thinking, and a few people in the comments thinking about what other sport, like fictional characters, sports characters, could you have cards of, like Happy Gilmore. So. Yes, yes, that'd be fantastic. A happy Gilmore card. Let us know in the comments what else you think you would have. You could have Jackie Moon card. Um, Charlie cool. Sheen. Cha- what relevance does Charlie Sheen have? Oh, from Major League. Major League. Hmm. I was thinking hot shots. <laughs> That's not sporting. <laughs> yeah, but of course, Major League. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That makes more sense. Mighty Ducks. Emilio Estevez. Mm. Um, any sports movie or show that has some sort of a tie to cards like that. There should be more celebrities in sets. Yeah, there should be. There absolutely should be. And, like, I've had this discussion. So, uh, DJ from Panini, who uh, many people are now <laughs> friends with. Yeah. Because he... Because he volunteered him, it. He volunteered it. <laughs> um, Back in the days when I was just his friend, mm. um, we would often discuss the fact that... See, when he was at Press Pass, he put together some awesome sets like that. Yeah. Um, like, uh, he did the, the Kiss cards. Um, oh, really? Yeah, and he did... When he, Kiss has got a lot of cards. Yeah, well, I think he did them. Wow. And, I, and, I, and early... People listening probably won't remember this, but early at Panini... They had a set that was extraordinarily popular mm. called Americana. Is that they just still do that? No. It, oh. was, it was popular, but it only was popular when it dropped in price a lot. Mm. So I don't think it was successful. It was just popular. Um, he, they did that, and they also did a country music one, which I remember having... People had a chase for Leanne Rhymes, and obviously who wouldn't? Really? Yeah. Early Leanne Rice. John, okay. John Laws loved her, I think. Lawsy. <laughs> you get Lawsy in the set. Oh, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> um, so they had those. So early doors, I think they did try to go that way a bit and it didn't work at the time, but times have changed. There's a couple of great ones there. I think from uh, Carl Malone Collector, he's mentioned Sandlot Kids. Um, Kenny Powers, that would be fantastic. You can have all of those characters from Eastbound and Down. Um, Sydney, Sydney Dean from White Men Can't Jump. 
Yeah, Woody would sign for sure, wouldn't he? Woody Harrelson, yeah, yeah. He'd, that'd be fantastic. Be fantastic. Yeah, imagine that, man. <laughs> Let the ball. <laughs> and um, just more, yeah, more celebrity sets in general. Now, obviously, if Panini have dropped the Americana Bowl, mm. a company like Leaf have picked it up because <clears throat> because they still they still put out. Is it called um, Pop Century? Oh, every the- now and then. I th- Brian Gray's been talking, he's got Stallone in the new one, he's yeah. got Pacino, he's got, I think he's got some Taylor Swift stuff. The, the, the Leaf stuff is incredible. Yeah. Like, there's no, you can't kind of deny that, but, like, people, people want those brands, they want, they mm. want national treasures, George Costanza. Well, like clearly. The, yeah. Yeah. Like they, they want Prism, Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Yeah, or Prism Jack Nicholson. Oh, wow. Like a, like, fan, like, they used, they used to be fans of the game. In Donruss, yeah. Donruss yeah. Football. We, we were discussing this before. I mm. think that a set needs, one of the, maybe one of, one of the newer sets, or one of the sets that needs just propping up a little bit with a chase, I think they need a, a, a short print, like, courtside set. Yeah. That features... Just elites. Just the big fellas, like a Jack Nicholson. Sometimes yeah. like Leonardo DiCaprio sitting with him. Yeah. Jimmy Fallon. Drake. Mm. I mean, it'd be popular. Yeah, but you, and, and you get Drake if you get Raptors. You get Jack if you get Lakers. Yeah. You get Gary V if you get Knicks. Yes. Like, you, they actually literally fall into a team. That's, That's true. And if, if you got the Pelicans, you shit out of luck. Because <laughs> <laughs> no one goes to Pelicans. No one goes. <laughs> shit out of luck. <laughs> they won't win. So Panini, if you like that idea, mm. hit me up. Yeah, definitely. More, um, more celebs in cards. I saw a dude post this just last night before we wrap this one up. He, what's that new Netflix movie, Red, Red with the Rock? Red Notice. Red Notice. This dude, and this is, a, this is a local group too, this is an Aussie non-sport card collectors group. He posted a pick, he dropped a big old pick. Mm. Ryan Reynolds from one of the X-Men sets, Auto. Mm-hmm. The Rock, Scorpion King, Auto. Did, that. Did you? Mm-hmm. Uh, Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman, Auto. Mm-hmm. He's just posted them in a pick and he's gone, Little red notice cast check, mm. and this peak was just like the comments underneath were like, "Whoa, the value is even on that rock card now." It's just crazy. The I tried to get that uh, that uh, Cryptozoic release mm. that had the Wonder Woman in it because um, it had Baffleck as well. Yeah, it was a serious, re- a really solid product. Like mm. it's a fantastic product. Shout out to my friend Jamie who put that together, mm. um, and. Um, and it it went so quick. Um, yeah, it wouldn't so, have. but really cool. It's funny that when you ask women about that new film, they say that new Ryan Reynolds Gal Gadot films on. When you ask men about it, they go that new <laughs> Rock films out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that makes sense. I mean, we all everyone likes Ryan Reynolds, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But like, he's become he's become such a threat. A like th- a threat to. To your masculinity, like he, okay. you can just like you, you're so immediately compared against him. Like he's funny, yep. he's good looking. Yep. When he started singing, that just like ruined it for everybody. Yeah, can you sing too? You saw the? Did you see the TikTok with him and uh, Will Ferrell? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. singing, I guess. Yeah, so you can sing as well. So he's basically everything. He's a trifecta. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it is a bit of a threat. Speaking of someone who's. Uh, who's just a multi-talented individual, yep. you caught up with... With Tyson Beck, who um, probably isn't watching because he's so busy. <laughs> um, but, yes, I spoke with Tyson Beck earlier this week. Tyson Beck, of course, a fantastic artist who works very often for Tops. Uh, I think in the past has worked for Upper Deck, for select locally, Panini, um, Panini. 
and um, I spoke to him this Monday for the podcast. It'll come out later today, probably tonight, uh, on YouTube, and it'll be on the on on your podcast platforms as well. So keep an eye out for that. That was all about his process, um, how busy he has been this last you know twelve months, eighteen months, mm. and. Um, one of the things that I always want to ask people on this on this side of the industry, you know, we're all sort of on the outside of it, whereas somebody like him, especially with his own releases, as well as working for, you know, Tops, etc., he's, he's behind a curtain. So he can answer questions like, how long does it take to actually make a set? We see people in forums on Facebook groups talking about, oh, why don't they just do that? They could do that really quickly. Mm-hmm. Well... Can they, or does is it is there actually quite a bit of a process? And so you'll figure out, you'll learn about some of that process in this interview with Tyson. He was very generous with his time. Um, had I had him for almost uh, almost an hour and a half um, oh, wow. on a Monday morning when the guy is you know he's he's talking about boxing up cards to send to his next um, superstar athlete. He alluded to. He said. The next person I'm getting to sign is somebody as big, or some would say bigger than Giannis. Has been. <laughs> no, no, he said it. No, he said another NBA, another NBA athlete at the same tier. Caruso. As Giannis before the end of the year, Caruso would be for the memes. I mean, it would, his stuff sells out anyway. His yeah. stuff sells out very quickly. It, it, because the designs are just, even if you're not a, a fan of the athlete, the designs are fantastic. Um, but imagine Tyson Beck collab with Caruso. Yeah, this is, I'm going to draw your Caruso card right now. Okay. Yeah, so that will be out tonight, Tyson Beck. Obviously, we, in Australia, we've got, we feel a special amount of pride um, when, we, when we talk about Tyson Beck because he is a local. Um, he's someone who's cracked into that design and card industry. That's perfect. I'll show my, that to the screen. That's, that's all you'd my, need, yeah. That's my Caruso signed card. Just, just a dome. Just the headband. Mm. Uh, Bogut was talking about him on his podcast, actually. Did he play with him at all? He did. Oh, wow. Briefly, that, <laughs> that tiny, I don't know how many, did he even suit up uh, at the Lakers before he left the NBA? Caruso was on the G League team. Wow. And they would be at practices together and Bogut's a fan of Caruso. He was like, why did the Bulls let him go? Why did the Lakers let him go to the Bulls? Anyway, Tyson Beck tonight, that's going to be great fun. Um, you, you said that Tyson Beck was arguably the second best, outside of me, the second best artist that you'd ever seen. <laughs> yeah? That's what you said? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll say I'm, that now because you're here in front of me. I'm going to show people just a sneak peek of uh, my artwork mm. for an upcoming merch offer. Um, this is uh, Blake's merch, just my concept drawing. Yep. Uh, the big boy, and uh, that's basically just a mess of human <laughs> um, looking at a card. Card packets all around him. Yeah, card packets all around him. Some food. People don't see under <laughs> under Blake's desk. Mm. There's actually half-eaten meals. I'm legitimate. And there's a, there is a there's a, he's got a tub of peanut butter. What? That he leaves the lid off. That's just great. The guy's mad. The guy's mad. He's just a... Is that merch going to come before the end of the year? Not at this rate. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I wish it would because I think that would sell something. <laughs> oh, God. Now, the, the last um, sort of big topic that, that we hit... I accidentally hit it. I saw a good yeah. tweet. And then I thought, I'm going to use that tweet, I'm going to reword it and post it as my own. Yeah. Was, um, was a, the topic of, or a question, would you, you could word it, should you, would you overpay for a card you really wanted? Over, and I put overpay in quotation marks because I think there is some, there's some license with that, top, that, that term. Of overpaying, I'm not sure that um, you know, some people will go strictly by comps, 
for a card and other people will be like, well, it's up to me what I want to pay or what I want to sell it at. Mm-hmm. Um, so have you ever overpaid? Would you overpay? Should you overpay? Absolutely. Mm. Um, and I have. Yeah. Um, Can you think of one? Yeah. <laughs> What's the first like, one? Every, I mean, every, every day. Every day I can think of one. So yeah. uh, today I saw that a PSA 6 Cassius Clay Hemet's Journal sold for 10,000 US. Is that good? I've paid... Comparatively? So I've paid 20,000 plus US for three. <laughs> wow. So have I overpaid? Um, one of them I was shill bitted. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. I, rem- I remember you telling me about that. Yep. Still, I'm still dirty about that. Yeah. Um, uh, but I just don't see how it's not worth three or four times that or will be worth that. So yep. I've overpay all day for that card. Um, yeah. And I've got a guy came into the store, um, I don't know, must have been like three years ago now because that's when people used to come into the store. <laughs> um, and he had a collection and it had a sign, a, a jewel a sign, Jordan Kobe. Jersey autos, yeah, um, was just in it was good condition. Wouldn't have graded well. Would have graded authentic, mm. and um, it was jersey numbered, like it was like twenty three or something or, or eight or something. I can't remember. Wow. And um, and he had a number of other cars, all nice cars, and I made a play mm. that I thought was enough money that he would want to do a deal. And cash money is different. Yeah. When you can just pay someone up front, like right there and then, it's different. Mm. And uh, it was... Sig- yeah, it's different well, It's different than an electronic transfer, So it's certainly. And it's different doing it in person in a store. If you can walk out with a wad of cash, yeah. people will feel very different about that. Oh, yeah, as well. I, you know, I've got a lot of things that are worth money, but I can't necessarily get it today for them. Yeah. So it depends how bad you get. Anyway, um, he was offended. <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> and I don't blame him for being offended. Um, the it, it was an, it wasn't an offensive offer, but it was a it was a first offer. Yeah. And uh, and he left, and um, and, I, and I should have overpaid. <laughs> I should have overpaid. Yeah. I should have massively overpaid for that. Like you should have gone an extra what? I should have doubled. Thirty, forty. You should have doubled. I should have doubled it. Yeah. Um, because I should have got the car. I should have paid a lot more than what it was worth rather than what I thought that person needed at the time. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you hopped on, this is a really interesting one for people. If you hop on eBay today, the largest marketplace in the world, like, I'm just gonna hop on, shit, my phone. I'm just gonna hop on right now. Yeah. And I'm gonna type in, I don't know, let's just go Jarma Rant. There we go, just go Jarma Rant. You, if you go anything and you search for the highest possible sale, um, mm-hmm. so we'll search for sold. I should be able to do this faster, shouldn't I? Um, and then we'll search sort by highest. Here we go, highest. Now the highest, the highest sale yeah. of Jar Morant is like uh, we've got on bid sixty one bids, thirty five thousand US dollars. Yeah. Okay, and it falls away pretty quick. Like you give me thirty thousand US dollars, the next one under that, twenty-five thousand US dollars. When you offer someone twenty thousand odd dollars plus, yeah. you're in a very, very, very small percentage. Like there is very few people getting offered that sort of money for a card at any one time. As much as we like to think about it's hundred thousand dollar cards and two hundred thousand dollar cards. Yeah. King Golden just sold this for whatever. The reality is that it is so rare, and um, to actually get that money in your hand, mm. uh, it's a it's a different thing. And so, um, I should have offered more. I fucked up. Okay? You were banking on it being this is pretty this unique, is a good deal. This is good. This is yeah. a lot of cash. And this dude was like, "No, nah, not, not good enough." I should have overpaid. So I completely understand. Yeah, where that comes from, and I do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what the majority of the comments under the post were saying. You know that I well, I overpaid on something today or yesterday. Mm. Or I do it every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a bit of back and forth about comps, etc., which you can expect. Um, but you know, comps go up and down. Yeah, 
Let's see if any of Spacato sold on eBay right now. <laughs> um, before we go to a couple of questions, I can see you've come through. We've got new. We've got a. We've got to look at brand new um, Donruss soccer. How often do they bring Donruss brand to soccer? Uh, I can remember three. Okay. Um, the first one was an absolute. Um, what's the right word for it? Uh, tragedy. Oh really? It was horrible. It had nothing in it at all. Terrible. Right. Um, and then after about three years of me selling it at like forty dollars a box, yeah, uh, it Pulisic played really well. And then it had Pulisic rookies in it, and then they took off, and then it kind of jumped up to maybe eighty dollars. Okay. Um, but it's otherwise just an awful set. It's not one that they bring often to soccer. It seems to do more with Prism, with Select, uh, Chronicles. But this time with Don Russ, it's special because it's Road to the World Cup, mm -hmm. which is obviously next year. Yep. It's going to have, obviously, so that's national teams. You're not going to have club, um, <coughs> club teams in there. Yep. It's got, obviously, the base Don Russ mm -hmm. with um, Cristiano looking really good mm -hmm. on that sample card. It's got optic variations, mm -hmm. which people like. 12 per box, which is good. Yes, big thick packs, bumper, bumper packs, and um, kabooms. Yep, 25 rookies, 25 rated rookie stamped players. Okay, that's big too. It's important because yeah. it's potentially going to be the first World Cup cards of 25 people. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure uh, who, I mean, we don't know who they're going to be yet, but there's some seriously talented young players. I think Spain's got like a 16 or 17 year old. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of good cards there. The, the Donruss brand, I think, is, is massively underrated. There's a set, the, I want to say 1819 set, which came out and sold out really fast. That's got like, Sancho, Havertz, Vinicius, or Vinny Jr., um, Bowden. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another one. Um, Alfonso Davies. There's like uh, just a host of guys that's their first car. Right. And it, they're stunning. It's Mbappe's first. Oh, wow. Like a, a rookie card, albeit he's unlicensed in it, so it's PSG but no name. Okay. Um, so there's like so much good content in it. The first optic of Messi, the first optic. So it's got a it's got a real it's got a real heritage in soccer cards that are gonna be key soccer cards in ten years time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Positions it well. Mm, it does, and it's a, I don't know, I've, I've always liked, I, I like the frame mm -hmm. of the cards, the design around it with the D, mm -hmm. I think it's a cool set. So that's going to be, and it's, and it's got the kabooms in there as well. Hold on, he's first, mm. he's first ever kaboom. So, it, it's, it's going to be really big, it's coming off the back of Euro Mosaic that was, yep. like, not a disaster, it just, it just didn't, it didn't hit. Um, mm. and it didn't help that whilst England played well, it was a horrendous finish to, to Euro. Like, um, Mbappe misses a penalty and knocks out France. Yeah. <laughs> Sancho, Rashford, and then um, uh, uh, Saka, who were literally like the, all of the hobbies invested in them, yeah. lined up and went, miss, miss, miss. Mm. And that's just like... So... Yeah. It, it was a, it was a real uh, it was a real unfortunate ending, mm. and the product, whilst it was it had a it's got a lot of content that's good in it, mm. it just felt watered down, and you didn't get enough bang out of like we were doing case breaks. Like I think we went three case breaks in a row without hitting one car that was numbered below ten. Mm. Yeah, so mm. but any's good. They'll fix that. Did, I think this would just be a knockout. Yeah. Now, before we let that topic go of kabooms, yeah. uh, people are saying, people in the hobby, mm -hmm. are saying that the kaboom 
mm. can never be, will never be mm. an all-time card. Mm. It will never top out, for example, the precious metal gem, mm. which is sort of a, com- a comparative. Mm-hmm. Certainly now with, the, with the, the newer design, it's less artistic. It doesn't have the caricatures that the old one, the old Kaboom's have. It's always photos now. Can the Kaboom become an all-time card? Will we look back on this, especially if Panini is out of these sports in a few years? Do we look back in 10, 15 years at the Kabooms and think, wow, we should have bought more, more Kabooms? Do we, do we, do we? Um, I, think that the, I think that they're two very different cards. Mm. I don't. I can't see a world where the kabooms have the same sort of um, value as the PMGs. It's a. It is. A, it almost represents like the the last gasp of a of a generation. The collected cards, like mm. it's like you know, just, it, it's almost like when Ricky Ponting comes out and plays his last innings, or like Gia's last game. Like mm. it kind of just ninety. Seven ninety eight, um, and then, and it was so infrequently used. Albeit they've they've literally just just ridden it like a dead horse for the last have recently <laughs> last yeah. ten years. Yeah, it's everything, yeah. Um, so I don't think it's going to be that. I, I think that it is in and of itself uh, a, a very It'll forever be linked with Panini. Yeah. I think Panini kind of, they, there's a few things that, they don't own Refractor. Like the, the Prism kind of scenario is a, a loose one because everyone still says, oh, well, that was Topps' idea. Topps did that. Yeah. They don't own Jersey cards. Vapodec bought Jersey cards in. Um, autographs, obviously, have been around for ages, but they, mm. but, but when people think about Panini, they'll, they've got the Kaboom, the Color Blast, mm. um, and, They've got these animal prints. That's kind yeah. of that's kind of the painting of the dragon and the tiger and the zebra. Mm. So I think that for that reason, it will become iconic with it. And then when you go into spaces like soccer, it's it's not as they haven't gone as deep yet. I mean, we haven't got Messi in his you know true kaboom set in his club gear. Um, okay. so, no, we've only got him in Argentina, which was which was select. Okay. We've only got Ronaldo in Portugal, which we're going to get again. Yeah, um, we don't have any Halan. We don't have uh, Mbappe in a true set. He's only ever been in the reward set. Right. So, and, and rewards cards historically have not had the value of a true set because it costs mm. a, it costs a hell of a lot more to get it out of a true set. Yeah. So, not PNG. But absolutely iconic. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think they're beautiful. I I like. I actually do like the old caricature, the old cartoon, yeah, cartoon too, cartoony too. ones, especially the old like. This is LeBron. There's a Dirk. I think there's a. There's certainly a Kobe. That huge dunk. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you. Great notes on the um, on the kaboom. We've got a few questions, and then we will get back to it. From Daniel, that's a quick one. Are you looking for staff for the new Hobart store? I'm available. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Uh, not at this stage. Give me six months, and when I'm tired and don't want to work anymore, uh, hit me up. <laughs> um, here we go from Khaled, talking about the Space Jam boxes. Can we talk about Space Jam boxes and potentially get a LeBron order? That's what. Why didn't I get that topic down? That's Never, a good I've, one. I've, I've not seen any opened yet. I saw no. one. I saw one open today. So, for those of you who are interested, um, I would I would normally get like a case of a, a new Star Wars release. Yeah, a couple of cases of some. I enjoyed it. So, like one, two cases. Yeah. Not much. Not a lot. Yeah. Well, a lot for someone who sort of doesn't buy and sell cards all the time. Yeah. Um, and so I, I would do that as infrequent, but I, I do do it. And the last Star Wars product I broke down, I did two cases of it, mm. and I had so it was like twenty four autographs. Yep. So I've seen most of Star Wars films. I think mm. I didn't watch Solo. I don't think anyone did. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, 
I didn't have a single autograph mm -hmm. of a character, not, a, not necessarily a person, a character <laughs> that I recognised. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's, there's a lot of filler. So, yeah. Where am I going with this? I, I've seen uh, my good friend Mike at Mike's uh, Stadium Sports Cards, follow them. Yeah. You know, already it's Colorado's best trading card shop. Mm. Um, and he also is a, uh, he's a, he works in the, the Nuggets uh, stadium, the, his security. Oh, cool. And he works at all the concerts. So yep. he's always got like really cool stuff about like at, at concerts and stuff that's happening. And it's yeah, really Vegas, yeah. Amazing guy to follow. Yep. Um, royalty. Uh, I've already lost my train of thought. So he posted a photo mm. of someone in his store and hit from the new surface. <laughs> yeah. And it's like that. It's like Speedy <laughs> Gonzalez. <laughs> and it's... And I'm like, this is going to be a graveyard of, yeah. I have no fucking idea who this is. Yeah. And no, it looks like they have produced a lot. Yeah. Like a lot. There's blasters, there's yeah. boxes. Speedy Gonzalez is like, like his, his niece from the, from the movie, who's like six deep, you know, watching the game. He yeah. has signed. <laughs> Well, there's two LeBron autos in it. It might just be two. Like, literally, that's all the upper deck had. Like, we've got two stickers of two sticker LeBron autos, and we're going to put them into this set, and good luck. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. What's he doing? Couple more questions. Zach. Where's it gone? It's probably just sitting in business class seats with, like... Um... Zach, looking forward to the mint... Collective in Vegas. Oh, Can you yeah. talk on the benefits or the best things about attending these big events? You've talked about these this sort of topic before, G. Yeah, so I always go to those events. Um, I've been to the industry summit a number of times. Mm. Thank you, GTS. Thank you, Beckett. Um, thank you, Penny. Um, I've been to those a number of times, and <clears throat> I'm I'm really terrible for um, what's the word. I need to clear my schedule. Like I literally, I can't, I can't do things at them. So I can't go and have it be on the trade show or, mm. um, or I, if I try to organize meetings with people, I'm terrible for it because I literally just get caught up in the moment of being with the show. Yeah, whoever I'm yeah. with, yeah. whoever I'm talking to, I'll miss meetings. Um, mm. I, I find I need to be really, um, personable and not professional mm -hmm. um, and I've kind of found that that's let's put in inverted commas worked yep um, being able to have relationships with people um, so the mic I just mentioned yep um, took me under his wing straight away organized dinners uh, you know immediately you're at a, at a dinner with 20 people like Mitch from Bullpen right got Tim from Com C yeah um, immediately in a room with these people and listening to their stories and learning so much so um, my advice uh, and it might not work for everyone is just go just go or if you can just go mm. and don't don't like try to plan your day interact and just see where that takes you because it generally takes you somewhere pretty special so yeah okay so the advantage of attending is less in buying and selling or seeing cool cards or finding out the news and more in meeting and developing relationships absolutely absolutely you well, and it doesn't even need to be the person who owns tops oh wow like i you know i had dinner with michael rubin tonight like you know we met people at comic-con in line at comic-con yeah and changed our whole experience for yeah. years years yeah. to come yeah um so th there's something to be said about being in places with people who are so like-minded and passionate and how that can just change the whole trajectory of your life like mm. don't go there hoping to secure a deal with fanatics like if you do you're gonna be so disappointed yeah um, yeah so yeah good question 
Let's have a look. Hoop Hits. Hoop Hits. Who came to visit us a couple of times. Our WWE cards are dark horse as a good investment. They seem to be gathering some momentum. I don't know. They've said, you, could, you could say that for the last couple of years, they seem to have been gathering momentum, mm. and, and, but still not, you know, not, certainly not reaching the heights of basketball, football, baseball cards. Um, but I think, I think anything, anything rookie card related, you know, Hogan rookie cards, Flair rookie cards, those, that old set um, from the late 70s, I think, Wrestling All-Stars, mm -hmm. those guys were always, you know, the, the, you know, the first cards of Ric Flair, the first cards of Hulk Hogan, of Andre. Um, and some of the bigger cards that we've seen in things like Transcendent, and then moving into the Panini era of WWE, I think it will bring a lot of new eyeballs because it'll get that big push from Panini. It'll get, they just said today in an interview, actually there was an interview from somebody at Panini talking about the brands they're gonna use. So they're going out with Prism. It's getting the UFC treatment, basically. Yeah. It's gonna go Prism Select, um, Chronicles and probably Immaculate next year. So that'll be this, the WWE sets that come out next year. That's going to bring a lot of interest from other sports. You know, basketball people, football people, baseball people are going to start seeing more WWE product in front of them and they're going to get interested, I think. Mm. PSA to Panini. Massive PSA. And I don't know what the... I don't know if PSA is the right word. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the um, what the like the the contract or what what the issue is with this, but I think that the maturity in the WWE collectibles market will come when they sign with their actual names. You think so? Mm -hmm. Not uh, not their not their character names. Not their character names. So you're gonna so you think it's Mick Foley, I, Terry Bollea. Yeah, I think and 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 if not if not all the time, I think that sets mm. that feature the actual human. I think that autograph is going to be something that is exceptionally valuable. Hmm. Um, just me, maybe. That's interesting. Okay. Well, thank you all. Oh, yeah. So I do have one more thing on it. One more thing. Is that, I think that, and not that it's not always been the case, but when you look at the, at the marketability mm. of guys like The Rock yeah. into Netflix and these streaming services, that they can hit Fast and the Furious type audiences just all the time. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, it's a big audience. It is. And they've seen how well those WWE, um, gener you know, th those characters that have been generated over a period of time, um, they can see how, how well that converts to those films. Mm. I think that the evolution of blockbuster stars for streaming services are going to be they're going to come from the WWE so yeah this concept of rookie cards and being really valuable I guarantee you like Vince McMahon and Triple H right now Steph right now are looking at the person who is going to be the next rock in 10 years time yeah and they're going to be in a panini set so mm, yeah like Smash those rookies because it's going to happen. I guarantee it. That's an interesting. That's we're going to have to clip that. Mm. That's a good point. So that next pop culture icon, sports, movies, TV, Netflix, whatever it is, etc., is there's a good chance that they're a rookie in the WWE right now. Netflix are like looking at going. Oh wow, Vince McMahon's already already done like a hundred million dollars worth of marketing of this character's brand. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's free for us. Yeah. Or 
all we need to do is pay them half that. Yeah. And then we're going to get like, you know, 400 mil on the flip. Interesting. It's, just, it's like easy money. Easy money. Keep an eye out for those pre-orders then. I guess it's going to start with um, WWE Prism sometime next year. Who knows when? Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thanks for your questions. We will see you next week. And don't forget that Tyson Beck interview uh, going out on, uh, on the podcasts and on YouTube tonight. Bye.